Publishing low content books such as diaries, journals, notebooks, planners, coloring books, activity books, puzzle books, and so much more, it's been long touted as a dead simple way to make easy money, yet a vast majority of aspiring publishers have their hopes dashed when they find out their low content books are dead in the water. Why is that? Well, they're not going the extra mile, instead they're relying on intuition alone, or worse yet, outright stealing people's intellectual property. Side note, that's not a good look, so just stop doing it if you're doing it. Now, if you want to make a true impact in your self-publishing business, you must take a few preemptive steps to validate ideas and make informed decisions. Therefore, you better your odds of success over blind guessing and, of course, chasing someone else's creative IP. Again, scumbag move. Hey, this video is sponsored by the fine folks at BookBolt. More about them later in the video. The two key factors in validating ideas are niches and relevant keywords associated to the niche. For instance, a niche denotes products or interests that appeal to a small specialized section. Though you could continue publishing line notebooks, let's face it, unless it has something unique or extraordinary about it, why would a browsing customer want to buy it? Couldn't they just go to their local Walmart or Dollar Tree? Heck, they might even save a few bucks in the process. It's what you put on the covers and in the pages that makes the difference. But we couldn't possibly describe a niche without first saying a few relevant terms or phrases that evokes an instant understanding of what they're talking about. That's why keywords serve the greatest importance in the lifetime success of your publication. Choose the wrong keyword and you end up with no customers or in a fist fight with perennial sellers on the Amazon platform. Naturally, your book will languish in obscurity thereafter. When you find the right keyword or keyword phrase with a good balance of competition versus customer demand, that's where the magic happens. So why don't we take a look here at a practical application of keyword and niche research. I'm going to show you the hard way and then the easy way. Now let's get the hard way done first because you'll get a better understanding of how Amazon functions as a delivery vehicle for your self-publishing business when used right. What you'll need first is DS Amazon Quick View. Now this is a little plugin that you can get. It's an extension for your Chrome browser. Just go over to the Google Chrome store, use the free version. I've never paid for the premium version and it still serves its purpose. Now the purpose that it serves is many full over. You're able to quickly see information about books that you wouldn't otherwise see on a, just a raw search. So when you go search up something, sure, it's going to give you all of these products related to that keyword, but you won't know the actual data that to make an, an informed decision. Things like the rank of a book or how long it's been published or how many reviews it has on it. All of that stuff is condensed down and that's what DS Amazon Quick View does. Now the next thing is we're going to need to make sure that that is enabled for incognito mode. First of all, go over, visit settings in the top right hand corner of your browser, then extensions, then locate the DS Amazon Quick View plugin, click details, then scroll down and turn on the allow in incognito option. Now this segues perfectly over into incognito mode and why the heck would you need that? If we go and do research on a raw browser, in other words, something that you've already been browsing through, you've been buying things, you've been searching things on Amazon, the problem is when you start to do research, Amazon's thinking you're looking for you, so it's going to try to serve you things based on your previous buy patterns and search patterns. We need to go as pure as possible, so that's why we're going to go open up incognito mode. By the way, I think it's control shift and the letter N when you're in a regular browser that it will pop open incognito mode, at least this for Chrome. If you don't know what it is for your browser, just Google that up. And also, one thing really quick here is set up a hyperlink to the Amazon Bookstore. Now you can do that simply through a Google search and it'll give you a link that you can kind of go into the Amazon Bookstore and then just bookmark that because it's going to have the category dropdown for books automatically set up so when you go in everything's ready to go when you're going to do your niche and keyword research. Now what you do is going to be this. Use the incognito mode to visit the Amazon bookstore. Now you're gonna start with a fresh idea you might have. It could be back to school planners or fitness trackers or blank sheet music. Type out a keyword phrase that comes off the top of your head or that you're most interested in. Now jot down the ideas. 
You're going to narrow down your list by doing a search of each one of these things. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to start to type it on in and it's going to populate it on up there and it's going to give me some different recommendations. Note those things down, all right? Put them down and say, okay, I'm going to come back and look at it later. We're not going to do the search until we have our list. And as soon as you have a list of say three dozen or four dozen different words, let's go ahead. We're going to narrow it down and what we're going to do is we're going to search for each one of those things. Now, ideally, you want at least 12 to 24 solid keywords when you're done. So that means when you're going through this next vetting process, you're going to want to make sure you have at least a dozen or so that you can use on your publication. Now, what are you watching for? When you do the search, we're looking for the number of products, which is going to be listed in the top left-hand corner here on Amazon. It's not a magical number, and less sure is better, but if there's no one buying, is it even worth publishing? So just know that, you know, sure, less than a thousand products is a good starting point, but from time to time, you're gonna notice that sometimes there's going to be other products that are gonna be tossed in there that are not really that relevant to that specific keyword, so I don't try to live in die by the amount of products there. But if you see it says something like 80,000 or 100,000 products or more, maybe that's going to be a tough niche or keyword to break into. Now this is where the fun of DS Amazon Quick View comes into play because they're going to show you the Amazon bestseller rank. Now briefly speaking here, the Amazon bestseller rank is a real-time report that's sharing what products are being sold and how they compare to the other products on the marketplace. The closer that a book is ranked to number one in the overall bookstore, the more sales it has. Now, the further out that it goes, the less it has. Now, let's push forward here because you also want to be mindful of what categories they're using because these are little hints that help you out in understanding, okay, where are my competitors? Where can I be able to get some good ideas as to what's the best step forward? The next thing is keywords. Keep an eye out for keywords that are being used in titles and subtitles and series names and in some instances if you go on the product page the book description also be mindful of the covers this is going to help you out when you get ready to publish a low content book if you know what the general feel of it is the typography of it is you'll be able to make an informed decision on how you will construct that cover design and uh, last but not least of course is going to be the what you're going to want to look at is the average Amazon bestseller ranking for the first 16 products that are pulled up on that page. Now, generally speaking, I want to see in order to use a keyword that's worthwhile, I want to see a rank of anywhere between 10,000 in the ABSR to 100,000. Now, you're probably saying, what the heck does that mean, Dale? That's about roughly 1 to 12 book sales per day. Now, if for some reason it goes closer to number one, that's no problem. Just understand it's going to be a fist fight to actually get any type of relevance for that given keyword. And of course, keep an eye on the pricing for each one of those things. It's going to help you out. Now, there's going to be some deeper exploration things you can do, and I'm just going to kind of gloss over them. You want to look at reviews. How many do they have? What are they saying? And of course, be mindful too, there's more and more pictures and videos that are being served up with the reviews that you want to take a look at. You want to, of course, see what is working for some publications and what is not working for some publications. Find out where that gap is and try to fill that need. Now, here's the big problem here, folks. After I've told you the hard way, you still have to rely a lot on intuition and That'll only get you so far. Yes, you can keep publishing books until you hit a good idea, then double down on it. Or you could vet the information a little more thoroughly with some hard to access intel on Amazon. And that's something that we really can't do with some of these means that are free. You can easily spend hours researching the perfect niche and keywords only to find out your idea just doesn't stick. Then you're out of time and money and whatever resources you have to publish that stinker of a book that isn't drawing any money. Now let's go ahead and look at the easy way. Now I mentioned that today's sponsors is BookBub, but don't tune me out just yet. Like I'm bussing into an ad spot. This is the part where I show you how BookBub does the research for you much faster, might I add, and gives you one of the most important metrics in your future decision-making processes, search volume. Yeah. 
how many people are actually searching for these things? Just because products are showing up inside search doesn't necessarily mean that the customers are searching for those things. So are people searching for your type of content? What are the keywords they type the most often when looking for something? And also, how many actual competitors do you have beyond just the first page results? Yeah, that's only scratching the surface. It's very well thousands or more, depending on what you're plugging in there. And are customers buying the products associated with the keywords? So there's two specific features that I like to use over in BookBolt. And uh, the reason is with BookBolt, we really get into the nitty gritty of low content books. We just toss out the things that are fiction and nonfiction books. Those won't serve us any good. We need to see what's working for low content. So let's break into the products feature. Now you're gonna narrow down your search base on a category. Now BookBolt will sift through all the search results to give you the cleanest data for low content books. Now let's face it, there are a lot of products on Amazon, so having the inessential search results sorted out helps a ton. Once you have a category selected for the type of book you're interested in publishing, you can hit search or enter a keyword or phrase related to the niche you have interest in. Now BookBolt brings you back all the relevant data including the total results, the average ABSR, the lowest and highest price, also the average price to make it easy for you to price your book later on based on the lowest and highest price. It's just doing the math for you if you will. Now the books showing up are the best selling for the search. So they're just gonna show you the ones that are the heavy hitters, the prize fighters, the ones that are crushing it. You'll want to look at the same information with each title like we did the hard way. Ah, hopefully you're not a cheater who skipped forward just because you couldn't be bothered with learning the hard way. Now note, the keywords on the right side giving you what is currently in use and the number of times they appear in the search results. Scroll a little further down and you'll find related keywords and the search volume for those keywords. But what if you want to go even more granular? Because we'd like to see how many people actually search for a term on Amazon. Proof of concept, if you will. So that's where we go over to the keywords feature. Now, let's go ahead and take one of the keywords, maybe that we unearth. You're gonna type in that keyword, whether it's a single term or a full phrase, it doesn't matter, a keyword can be any number of those things. Then hit search. Within a moment or so, BookBolt brings back all the relevant and related terms in some form of a broad keyword match. Now, pay close attention to the first column where it shows Amazon's search volume. The higher the number, the more customers search for that term. You can even see the search volume for Google, which if you can get discovered there, you can get discovered anywhere. And also, looking at what it costs advertisers per click shows buyer intent, meaning that if it's awful high, that means there's definitely an audience ready, willing, and able to purchase your products. Now, there's also the cloud feature, Book Scout, and other options, including the new BookBolt Studio with an all new customizable templates for your interiors. But let me save that for another video. Whether you do it the hard way or the easy way, you'll build out a low content concept based on the niches and relevant keywords, be it a puzzle book, journal, sheet music, or whatever else trips your trigger. For now, use the keywords in your title, subtitle, backend keywords, and more. And also, let the keywords and examples inspire you to create something unique that customers want to buy. Now, the question comes down to what way do you want to go? Would you rather spend countless hours relying on your gut instincts and hope for the best? or invest a little with BookBolt and save yourself the time and energy you could otherwise devote to creating more quality, low content books customers will be clamoring to buy. Visit our affiliate link at dailylinks.com slash BookBolt and use the coupon code DALE20 to get 20% off indefinitely. By the way, it's all caps, DALE20, like you're shouting at them, you gotta shout it. Now, what do you do with your keyword and niche research data? Stay tuned for the second part in this four part video series of publishing low content books on Amazon and the in the meantime, let me tell you about the 10 best low content book publishing companies out there. Yeah, there's even more than just Amazon KDP, folks. I'll see you there.